Experts have long touted the benefits of taking vitamin D. Canada's Food Guide recommends everyone over the age of two take the sunshine vitamin every day. That's because most of us don't get enough vitamin D from food and we don't get enough natural sun, especially in the winter, to make up for that deficiency. So what does vitamin D actually do for your health? To answer these questions, we have an expert, Dr. Jacqueline Pedersen, a neurologist and professor in the Department of Medicine at UBC, currently teaching at the University of Northern BC. Dr. Pedersen, first of all, how widespread is vitamin D deficiency in Canada? Yeah, so having suboptimal vitamin D status is common across all age groups and geographical regions of Canada, especially during the winter months when the sun's contribution to vitamin D status is negligible. The vitamin D insufficiency in Canada has been estimated to be about 40% if we use the Institute of Medicine's blood level cutoff of 50 nanomoles per litre, and even higher than this, up to about 65% if we use the Endocrine Society's cutoff of 75 nanomoles per litre. Wow. So why is vitamin D so important, not just for, for bones, but overall health? Yeah, so vitamin D has many effects in the body, mainly through its ability to influence multiple genes. And for this reason, it's often been referred to as a hormone or pro-hormone, in addition to being a vitamin. So adequate levels of vitamin D have been linked to optimal immune system functioning, better cardiovascular health, lower cancer-related and all-cause mortality, as well as better cognition and a lower risk of dementia. Mm. And now when I say linked, I mean that there's an association between vitamin D and these outcomes. We don't yet know if this association is causal. Mm. Now, I understand you're working on a study involving young people. What have you found so far? Yeah, so we were interested to know how common vitamin D insufficiency is among young adolescents in northern BC. And we also wanted to know if vitamin D status is associated with cognition in this younger age group, as it seems to be in adults and demonstrated in some of my earlier studies. So we found that vitamin D insufficiency was common, affecting about 41% of participants. And we also found that vitamin D status was linked to the adolescent's ability to recall a complex visual figure and draw it from memory. Specifically, those with higher levels of vitamin D did better on this test of visual memory than those with lower levels. Right. Now, these findings mirror what we have seen in adults, that vitamin D status is associated with cognition, especially more complex cognitive processes like visual learning and memory. And lastly, we appreciate your time. Uh, for someone who's watching this and thinking, how much should I take, uh, do you have a recommendation? Yeah, so that's a very good question, and recommendations do vary. Um, I mentioned the Institute of Medicine and the Endocrine Society having different cutoff um, levels. Now, these levels pertain mostly to bone health, and many experts um, believe that a higher level is likely required for other health outcomes. So I would probably go towards the higher level of 75 nanomoles per liter, and for mm -hmm. most adults, uh, this would require about 1,500 to 2,000 international units per day. Um, and for children, probably more like 1,000 units per day. Right. Dr. Jacqueline Pedersen with UBC, teaching at uh, the University of Northern BC right now. We appreciate your time and your expertise. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me.